I have healed from MCS. And um, I actually haven't used that expression. This is the first time I'm making that proclamation. Um, just to give you the history that I've carried with me, 15 years ago, I was, or seven, 17 years ago, nine, September 7th, 1997, um, at my job site, I was director of a children's program um, at an art center. And it was an after school program. And three days um, right before we were opening, they did renovation. And one of the things they did was they redid the floors and they, um, it was an old church and there were huge dance mirrors, longer than this wall. And being an old church, it wasn't real walls, it was partitions. And they were using high resin epoxy glues to put the, those mirrors up. And my desk was right next to that partition. And um, it was, I was aware of the smell, it was terrible. The room was that I was in was probably just a little bigger than this. Being a nonprofit, it was small. And there were only two of us who were full-time paid employees. The rest were part-time or volunteers. And um, being the director of the program, I felt really responsible for my program. And also, my background is a nurse. And my criteria is broken bones, pain. And I didn't feel that, but something didn't feel right. And I had, and I had no idea. I'd never heard of environmental you know, issues. And we had exhaust fans going. And some people were talking about having headaches. And actually, my head teacher went home and threw up. But again, I would go in day, the second day. And again, it's like, hmm, it doesn't feel good. I just wanted to go outside. And on the third day, they found me unconscious outside. And um, basically, my life changed overnight. For many people with MCS, it's a gradual story. It just sort of creeps up. They don't know what's going on. More like, you know, in a certain way, your story. Um, but this was really overnight. I was taken to the ER. Um, I was, you know, revived. I became conscious. And I thought I'd go to work the next day. Well, it took a few more days to get clear in my head. Something didn't feel right in my head, but I went to my primary and she said, oh, you'll get over it like a cold. And um, so I tried going back to work and I go back to work and they brought in beautiful flowers on my desk and I'm sitting there on my desk and I start sneezing and I start getting asthma. And it's like, gee, I love flowers. The flowers had come from a florist. They were all sprayed in pesticides. I didn't know that at the moment, but they moved the flowers and I'm better. They bought an air filter so that I could um, helpfully make it better for where I was. They moved the Xerox in the room. And yet my job was a very public job with parents, with the teachers, with the kids. And after a month trying to work at home, my boss and I um, agreed that I could no longer work. And it was heartbreaking. She and I cried. I never got to go back to my office. Somebody else had to clear out my desk. I never got to say goodbye to the kids or my teachers. Um, they actually all made little cards for me and donations. I had over $5,000 that was donated for my medical health, which as you know, if you've got MCS, it can go very quickly. Needless to say, that was the beginning of um, a nightmare. Um, I lived in a condo, I owned a condo, and it turned out the people downstairs got new carpets, and the carpets off-gassed upstairs. I couldn't stay there, and I literally um, had a friend up in Vermont who had a summer house where I used to go, and when he, so when he wasn't using it, he let me go. And I literally, it was in the fall, so I got to stay there. Um, and he did have electric heat, so as it got colder, I could use electric heat. But what happened was, um, when he had friends or he wanted it for the weekends, I had to leave. And I had no place to go. I had many friends who wanted me to come to their house, oh please come. And I couldn't go, I was getting more and more sensitive. And so I literally became homeless and living out of my car. And I had, at one point, I still had a, one cat 
And so she and I would be in the car sleeping. And again, like, where are we going to sleep? And again, many people would offer, not many, but a few offered me their driveways, but it was finding the safe driveway. And as the weather got colder or the snow started to fall, you know, you can imagine some of my nights I was not a happy camper. And I understand now that my amygdala was going crazy. My kids, you know, they couldn't understand what happened to their mom. And I think the invisibility of MCS is one of the hardest factors. I look fine. Everything looked the same. And for me, I looked the same. And so I had trouble believing it. They suggested I use oxygen. And I thought, hey, wait a minute, I'm 49 years old. I'm too young for oxygen. You know, that's what old people <coughs> use. A couple years later, I started being on oxygen and, you know, went everywhere with the mask and my oxygen. And that was my best friend because that meant at least and where going places meant going to the doctor or the lawyer. You know, that was the limit of the places I could go. And what really made it essential was last September, my daughter, who was 37, um, who just had gotten married, told me she was pregnant. And as much as I look forward to the day when she would get married, to the day when she would have a baby was my dream. And um, at that point, they uh, had just bought a rent of an old house, that, a fixer up. And I had gone to visit them. And we were sitting, having a picnic outside on the grass, away from the house, because there was a, li a lumber delivery. And I, I couldn't be there. I mean, that was the best we could do. The sun was out. And when she told me she was going to be pregnant, I thought, have this baby in May, I realized, oh, Wendy, I'm not going to be able to be here and see your baby. And then when I heard about this program, I kept wanting to like try it. And that pro this program was what I had my only hope to be with my daughter and her granddaughter. And I got to tell you, I was committed, diligent, perseverant, and whatever it was going to take, I was going to do it. I did not have the opportunity to be in a group like this. I didn't even tell many friends, because even my MCS friends, it was like, mm. So I just kept it to myself pretty much, and I was on a mission. And I worked this program day and night, and that's the key. It was practice, practice, practice. It took a while. But I didn't care. Whatever it was going to take, I was going to do it. And it's just been the missing piece of healing to make it possible to come to understand that what had happened to me with that huge exposure of chemicals, that my brain had, re had learned to perceive chemicals in a particular way, and how that had affected my, my structure of my brain, affected my body and affected how I could be in the world. And um, that's all different now. I love speaking about when I had MCS. And I've had so many victories. Coming here, you know, every time I go in a new building, it's another victory. I kept a victory list for weeks and months. And that at some point, you know, someone say, gee, you did that for us? I went on the MTA in Boston, hadn't done that in 15 years. I was like a little kid. I was like, ah, everything looks so exciting. And that's on my victory list. But there got to be so long, I stopped writing. And um, a friend said, well, you should write that on your victory list. My, I've got so many victories, I stopped writing. And so that, too, is what can be true for you. It's just a matter of understanding, understanding what's happening between your two ears. And once I understood the neuroscience of this, it was a no-brainer. It was a no-brainer that I could be free of these symptoms. And I know, and I just, I told this to Annie, she, in her DVD, she says at one point, all you need to do is believe that it's possible. And it was like, you know, Annie, I want to believe this. But I, you know, I'm like, yeah, lady. <laughs> For me, it's all I needed to do, and this is what I invite you to consider, is if you understand what's happening here, that's what shifts. And I realize that the attitude that I've brought towards healing myself is, is also inspirational. And 
I invite you to find that in yourself. And it, it, you know, you got to. I had to stretch it first to imagine ever saying, "When I had MCS, that was like, yeah." But you know, I tried. It's fake it till you make it, and it, it's it it's it's happened. That doesn't mean I don't sometimes notice, like, hmm, a little much here. And the truth is, um, because I think in part I'm 66, I've had, you know, I've carried a lot of uh, years on me. Uh, detoxing may take me some more time. Um, and I can go so many places that I didn't used to be able to go. It's really um, remarkable. And I really invite you all to know that that's possible for each and, and every one of you. I would say, here's the main thing. What I've learned from this program is I'm now at ease in the world. When I walk down this street, Northampton <clears throat> is filled with smokers and college students with cologne and perfume. You know, I celebrate it. Yay, look at that. I, at the aversion I used to have, like, why is that woman, young woman wearing that? It's like, hmm, that's how it is today. Let me bring this in, too. I have an ease. Chemicals are no longer the enemy. And that shift has changed how I feel in life in general. It's broadened a bigger expanse to, to, the, to, world, to the world, because I translate it to more than just chemicals. I am no longer fearful, and I am careful. Um, yeah. And oh, one last thing, when I started doing this program, and then at one point it got into this thing called incremental training, it was like, wait a minute. That's, I thought, this lady is crazy. <laughs> if she thinks I'm going to put any chemical in my apartment, like Dove soap, I, and I, it's like, no way. This, this is not, you know, and I found myself getting angry. It's like, this program might be good for something, but not for me. And then I realized, whoa, if just the thought of having Dove soap in my apartment is creating this reaction, there's no Dove soap you know, a mile from me. I was like, this program is the key. That was the moment where I just, you, I was totally sold. And it took me months, and I actually, just to have to think about it, I had to work with the thought first. Then I actually got some Dove soap, and I put it in a jar. And it was out on my porch. And it stayed out there for two months. Even the thought of it, I walk out the door, it was like this. And eventually, guess what? Brought the Dove soap in, had it in my bathroom, and enjoyed washing my hands. Breathing in the smell, putting it on the side, drying my hands, and just going, yay! It's not something I choose to use. But I know it's no longer an enemy. And it's that kind of use of this process that is so, um, I agree with you, it's the kind of thing that can change health issues for so many people. And you are those so many people that are with Annie right now. And may your healing path bring and unfold in ways that you can't even imagine. <laughs>